This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, April the 30th, 2019. It's the feast day of Pope St. Pius V, born Antonio Ghislieri in 1504 near Milan. He was elected to the throne of St. Peter in 1566 after the death of Pope Pius IV. Pious, by the way, is the Latin word for dutiful. In common usage, it's applied to those who keep their religious duties well. That person is pious. After the funeral of Pius IV, the incredibly popular and well-respected Roman bishop, St. Charles Barameo, threw his support publicly to Ghislieri, and he was elected pope soon after. He was crowned as pope on his 62nd birthday. Remember at the time, the Pope was also the king of the so-called Papal States in central Italy, and so he was formally crowned with a three-tiered crown, aka a tiara. The three tiers symbolize first and foremost the pastoral-slash-father role of the Pope, the worldly authority second, and at the top, the role of Vicar of Christ. There are other layers of meaning, but we'll save those for another day. Pope Pius V inherited a chaotic church. The Protestant revolt was in full effect. The positive side of that was that the church had done some real soul searching and was undergoing genuine reform, which is good. The Council of Trent had proposed some good and holy structural reforms. The sacred liturgy was undergoing the greatest stabilization in history. Charles Barameo was building up a philosophy and theology curriculum to train priests and bishops. Outside the church, though, the Turkish Muslim armies were advancing. French heretics, called the Huguenots, were undermining and even recruiting bishops, which caused the Pope to have to remove a cardinal, much like what we've seen in the U.S. with ex-cardinal, ex-bishop, ex-priest Theodore McCarrick. The Queen Elizabeth I of England had imprisoned Mary, Queen of Scots, and so Pius V had to excommunicate her. On a far less dramatic note, Pius V was the one who started the tradition of popes wearing all white, simply because he was a Dominican and chose to continue wearing his Dominican habit. Certainly other popes before him had worn a white tunic, but almost all of those popes after him did. Pius was a good pope, but he instigated very little during his short six-year reign. The most important thing that he did was the publication of the Roman Missal, which codified an official Roman rite of the Mass. Before Pius V, there were dozens of local rites, the Serum in England, the Leonine in France, the Dominican rite, the Franciscan rite, and so on. Pius published a Roman Missal from which any priest of the Roman Catholic Church could offer Mass. The other rites still existed, and they were in regular use until they were suddenly suppressed at Vatican II. The Roman Missal of Pius V created a stability in European Catholicism, which was absolutely incredible. And for that alone, he's worthy of our memory and of asking for his intercession. Today in 1803, the best bargain in world history took place. The nascent United States of America doubled in size thanks to a $15 million purchase of the Louisiana Territory. The Louisiana Purchase was negotiated primarily by Thomas Jefferson, and after some internal drama, he was able to get the purchase done while he was serving as the third president of the United States. The cash and debt deal today would be worth about $600 billion. And in exchange for that massive amount of cash, the U.S. got parts of modern-day Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska, Minnesota, North and South Dakota, the northeastern section of New Mexico, the northern portion of Texas, Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, east of the Continental Divide, and of course, Louisiana, west of the Mississippi River, plus the city of New Orleans. All in all, we came out pretty well in the deal. Finally, today is World Honesty Day, so be truthful. It's hard, it may even be painful, but I'm told it's the best policy. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.